once again uh, reverend craig demo we welcome you i would like to request you please share the word of god well praise god thank you again for the privilege and uh, we're going to get right into it today and as a matter of fact uh, you can go ahead and begin to put up the slides because uh, we're going to mention what we're going to talk about today and we've been on a series entitled healing from the inside out healing from the inside out and that's really where it takes place and we have been using as an anchor scripture a passage that is in Proverbs chapter 4 and uh, let me just say to you we have talked about different parts of the body and I think it's important for us to understand that God has specific things to say not just about our general health but also about specific areas of our body different kinds of sickness and disease God knows about all of them before these things were ever categorized by the medical community God knew all about it he had already made provision for it and he is ready to heal you he stands ready he wants you to be well more than you want to be well and you know when you really think about that it can make a real impact on you God wants you to be well more than you do praise God we've talked about the bones we've talked about the respiratory system we've talked about the e the eyes about the ears we've talked about uh, the feet and uh, let's go to uh, slide number two and let's just go to our anchor scripture there and uh, we want to mention this again to you praise God that says my son attend to my words now you have to understand that God's method of divine healing the way that he brings healing to us primarily is through his word Psalm 107 verse 20 says that he sent his word and he healed us and he delivered us from all destruction so understand the reason that he's telling us to pay attention to his words is because it's through the word that he brings healing to us the word and healing are inextricably, inextricably linked. There I got it out. Praise God. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Because, verse 22, they are life unto those that find them in health to all their flesh. All their flesh, not just your your body in general, but all your flesh for the eyes, for the ears, for the heart, for the lungs, for the stomach, for the spleen, for the brain, for uh, your 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 uh, pelvic region, uh, for your legs, for your bones, everything. It is health to all their flesh. And by the way, let me just rem remind you, us of this, that that word health there. In the Hebrew, it actually means the word medicine. So God's word is medicine to every part of our body. Isn't that amazing that we have a medicine available to us that takes care of any condition in any part of the body? Let's go to the next slide, though. And I just what I want to do here is just read uh, this passage again in the Passion translation we've read from several translations but i'm going to repeat this again from last time it says listen carefully my dear child to everything that i teach you and pay attention to all that i have to say fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit now there's the wisdom of god right there if you want things to make a change allow the the word to get so embedded in your spirit that you will experience healing from the inside out then he says then as you unwrap my words they will impart true life and radiant health under the very core of your physical being praise god so that is for you my friend that's for you receive the word and as you receive the word you are receiving divine healing now let's go to the next slide which is just a graphic and this is just an illustration i'm just lending special importance to what we're talking about this time because this time we're going to focus on the hands 
boy, we need we need strong hands. We really do. And uh, as a matter of fact, I want to get into some scriptures that uh, uh, that talk about how important the hands are. Now, if anybody has ever um, had a finger sliced off, or if anybody uh, is missing a hand, you know what we're talking about. What you know, life is very different if you don't have those extremities. And uh, just like last time we talked about the feet, those are extensions to uh, your, your, your body uh, from your legs. The hands are extensions from your body at the end of your arms. Now, you already knew that, but you know sometimes we don't even think about the importance of things that we take for granted. And it's real important, or excuse me, it's, it's real easy rather to uh, take for granted the fact that you have hands. You know, here's my hands and you can see them out in front of you and you could hold up your own hands and you don't think much about them uh, until something goes wrong, but they're very, very important. Now let's talk about why. Go to the next slide, praise God. Let's talk about why your hands are so important. Now, <clears throat> actually in the Bible, and uh, really in life, uh, your hands are tied to your labor. And uh, your labor has everything to do with the way that you, you live. Notice Psalm 128 verse 2 says, you will eat the labor of your hands. Uh, praise God. And, uh, you know, happy will you be uh, you you will it will be well with you if you will eat the the labor of your hands. Are you following me now? So this is very important. Now you may not be somebody who's out working the fields as a farmer. Uh, you may not be somebody that's uh, work working on an assembly line or you're a construction worker, but uh, still you know you might do most of your work with your mind, but still. In the Bible and really in life, hands are tied to your labor, tied to your work, tied to your livelihood, tied to your purpose, tied to your destiny. So the hands are very, very important. Let's go to the next slide. And uh, we're going to read an admonition uh, there in slide number six from the great apostle Paul. And notice what he says here. Let him that stole steal no more. Now, why is stealing such an egregious sin? It's an egregious sin because stealing robs others of the work of their hands, all right? So he's saying, <clears throat> if there's any thieves up there in Ephesus, we want you to stop what you're doing. That is not an honorable, it's not even a legitimate profession, okay? Stop with the thievery. And then he goes on and he says, but rather than this, you should labor, work with your hands, the thing what is, which is good so that you may give. See, God doesn't want us to be takers. He want us to be, wants us to be givers. And he demonstrates that because he is the ultimate giver. Are you following me? So this is very, very important. But what I want you to see in these couple of scriptures is the connection between your identity in terms of what you do and your hands. Now, with that in mind, let's go to the next slide. Uh, it's uh, Let's look at this scripture in Deuteronomy. Praise God. Deuteronomy 33 verse 7 says, and this is the blessing of Judah. And by the way, it's your blessing too. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him and be thou and help to him from his enemies. Now, this is important because actually, uh, uh, I'm titling this message, Hands to Labor, Hands to War, and Hands to Worship. See, your hands have a very specific purpose, and we want you to experience the blessing of Judah. We want you to have hands that are sufficient for you to labor, to fight your enemies, and to worship God. 
Amen. And if your hands are sufficient for you, then you're a blessed person. If you have arthritis in your hands, you know what I'm talking about. If you have chronic pain in your hands, you know what I'm talking about. We want your hands to be sufficient. We want them to be enough for you to do what you need to do with your hands. Now, with that said, let's go to the next scripture. And this is found in the book of Nehemiah. Praise God. Nehemiah chapter 6. And there in Nehemiah, we're going to learn something. Praise God. Uh, now, understand what Nehemiah and his crew were doing with an authorization from a king was they were building a wall. And this is very important to them. And as they built this wall, they had enemies coming against them, people trying to stop them from uh, building this wall. And it says there in Nehemiah 6, verse 9, let's go ahead and read that. Nehemiah 6, 9 says, they all made us afraid, the enemies did. Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it will not be done. Now, therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hands. Praise God. Now, that may be your cry today. You may need God to strengthen your hands. And if you, that's you, then you are in the right place at the right time because we're going to pray the prayer of faith and we're going to pray that God would strengthen your hands. Now, if you're he here for another kind of healing, that's fine too. Remember, God's word takes care of all your flesh. It's medicine to all your flesh. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's go uh, to another scriptures, a couple of scriptures, starting with one found in Psalm 18. Praise God. Psalm 18 says, He, God, teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Now, those are strong hands. Praise God. Those are blessed hands. Those are hands that can deal with enemies in life. Praise God. And when we talk about enemies, we're also talking about enemies that would come against our neighbor or against our nation or or come against, um, you know, the kingdom of God. We need hands that are strong. And I and understand I'm kind of giving a dual meaning to the word hands here because I'm talking about your literal physical hands, of course. But remember, your physical hands are tied to the, your work and tied to your war and tied to your worship. Praise God. Work, warfare, and worship are all connected to your hands. Are you getting this? Let's go to the next scripture. And this is also in, in Psalms, but this is Psalm 144. Psalm 144, verse 1 says, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, when you can fight just with a finger, <laughs> you're blessed. Glory to God. But, but God is strength to us, and God, our strength, teaches our hands to war. Again, hands are for work, for warfare, and for worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus did something very specific for you and we want to re we want us to remember this today that without Jesus sacrifice we could not be healed in any part of our body or any part of our mind or go uh, or find redemption in any place so with that in mind let's go take a look again at a scripture we looked at last time when we were talking about the feet Amen. Psalm 22, verse 16. Look at this. Praise God. This is a messianic psalm. It says, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, why did they do that? Why was that important to our redemption? So that our feet, which is our walk, and our 
in our hands, which is our work, would be redeemed. Praise God. He redeemed both our hands and our feet. He, he redeemed our direction in life and he redeemed our work. Praise God. And, and he did all of that. He would, they pierced his hands and his feet so our hands and feet would be redeemed. Our hands and feet would be uh, uh, healed in every way. Praise God. Praise God. And you know something? Jesus demonstrated this in his own earthly ministry. And I want to go to the next slide. And the the words are a little bit smaller on the page, but I want us to take a take special notice of this. Because whenever we read these miracles that took place in the the ministry of Jesus, we're actually reading a a case study. Amen. Many times uh lawyers will argue a case from case law. And doctors will study particular incidents of how people have recovered from diseases so that they get a better understanding of how they'll do it, right? So when we go before the Father, we can look at this case study and we could say, God, you're no respecter of persons. You did it for that person. You can do it for me. Amen. And Lord, you did do it for that person. You will do it for me. So let's take a look at Mark chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 3 through 5 of Mark chapter 3. And it says this, He saith unto the man which had the withered hand. It was all shriveled up. He said to him, stand forth. Now, why did he say that? Because he was calling things that be not as though they were, according to Romans chapter 4. Amen. Calling them the, the things that be not as though they were Romans 4, 17. Amen. So he said to the man that who had a hand that was all shriveled up, he said, stand forth. And then in verse 4, it says, he said unto to them, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. Now, notice, Jesus was always so uh, confident he was always uh, so assured in what he was doing that he that that the person was going to be healed, that he could just go ahead and take his time and use this healing as an object lesson. Praise God. How would you like to have Dr. Jesus uh, as as your professor teaching you how to bring healing to the sick? Praise God. Well, that's exactly what he's doing here. See, People that were law-minded were associating, um, you know, not doing any work with uh, uh, not healing on the Sabbath day. They were they were viewing healing as a work, but Jesus viewed healing as a rest. And God is bringing you unto your Sabbath rest today by healing you. Are you following me? But he asked them a question because they he knew that some of the mindsets of the people were wrong. Let's read the next verse. Let's read the conclusion of the matter. Verse 5 says, and when he had looked around on them with anger. See, there is a righteous anger against the works of the devil. He looked around them, uh, about them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of, of their hearts. And he said unto the man, stretch forth your hand. And what happened? He stretched it out. He couldn't do that before, but he did it, did it this time. He stretched it out and his hand was restored whole as the other. Hallelujah. He was restored whole as the other. Glory to God. See, Jesus performed this miracle, and he's performing miracles today. Let's end with this scripture, uh, verse, uh, let's see, uh, slide number 13. And we're going to take a look here at 1 Timothy 2, verse 8. This is an admonition from the Apostle Paul. And uh, Paul says here 
in 1 Timothy 2, verse 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Now, when we read that word holy there, we think about you know, being a, living a sanctified life. But I want to say to you as well that holy hands are hands that are whole. In other words, they're completely healed. They're well. Praise God. Your hands are for your work. Your hands are for your warfare. And your hands are for worship. And Paul is saying, go ahead and lift up your hands. Lift up hands that are whole, not shriveled not with arthritis, not in pain, lift them up whole, praise God, without any wrath, without any doubting, praise God, because we are worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And I think somebody listening to me right now, you just need to lift your hands, glory to God. Somebody's being healed as you lift your hands. So don't be timid, don't be shy. Go ahead and lift your hands before God, glory to God. And it says without wrath, but also without doubting. So lift them up right now in Jesus' name. I wasn't planning on doing that, but uh, uh, you know, I just was directed by the Holy Spirit as we were delivering this message to go ahead and lift up those hands and receive your healing. Praise God. As you do that, just like the man in Mark chapter 3 who had a shriveled hand, Jesus said, stretch out your hand, and he was able to stretch it out and do something he could not do before. So you are able to do something that you've not done before. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We just give you worship right now, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for our hands. Thank you that you taught them to war and taught them to fight. Praise God. We thank you, Lord, for these instruments that you've given us, these 10 stringed instruments, so to speak, Lord God, that are for our work, they are for our warfare, and they are for our worship. We just want to give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Well, that was a little different, uh, Pastor Amjad, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the uh, service back over to you. And uh, we've got a few minutes here left, I know. And you can just uh, carry this out however you see fit. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Father, in Jesus' name, we approach the throne Amen. of grace to obtain mercy thank and find you. grace to help in the time of need. And we just thank you, Lord God, that you are hearing the cries of your people. We thank you that you're a covenant honoring God, that you're a prayer answering God, that you are able to do what no one else can do. And we just thank you, Lord. We're so proud to be your children, Father God. We thank you that you have decided to adopt us into your yes. family. And uh, we just thank you, Lord God, for the, the grace that is on our lives as a result of our sonship in the Holy Ghost. We just give you praise, Father, for those that have uh, uh, submitted these prayer requests. I thank you yes. for Sister Rouge, Father God. Father, give her favor wherever she goes. Yes. Compass her roundabout with favor, uh, yes. Lord. Yes, and uh, Father, I thank you for opening the right doors. Thank you, thank you Lord God, for closing the right doors so she's not wasting any time. But mm -hmm. uh, Lord, give her not just a job, but give her a position where she can be yes. a blessing. We just thank you, Father, for this other sister. And Lord God, the worry, the worried mind is not a mind that you've given her. We know this. Uh, Father, maybe she's had uh, panic attacks. Maybe there's something chemical going on in her body. But I just thank you, Lord God, for causing all of her cares, worries, concerns, and things that she's going through to be laid at your feet for your glory. And we just want to give you praise, honor, and glory for it. In Amen. Jesus' name. Now, we thank you right now, Father God, for the nation of Pakistan. We yes. pray, Father God, 
your hand upon all of the government leaders, the prime minister, the president, the parliament, and even the provincial leaders, the city leaders, we the tribal elders, all of the people, Father God, within the country that are leading in a government fashion. We just praise you right now in Jesus' name for blessing the people for your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. We Amen. thank you also, Lord God, as we depart today for deliverance from all the fears of the virus that has gone around the world. And we just praise you, Lord, for healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Praise, praise the God. Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, Reverend Craig Demo, thank you so much for your precious time. You always pray for Pakistan and to pray for all the peoples who send us their prayer requests. Viewers, if you have any uh, testimony, please write us or send a short video of your testimony. God bless you all. God bless Pakistan. Take care, brother. Bye now. All right. Bye now. God bless.